Hello nurses, this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. This is pulmonary lecture number six, oxygen delivery devices. And I'm gonna go over this sticky note found on nursingcamp.com, Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram, and social media. So let's get into it. All right, we're talking about oxygen delivery devices and the first oxygen delivery device we're gonna talk about is a nasal cannula. Now, when you're looking at the NCLEX, and you are looking at oxygen delivery devices, you just have to know some basic concepts. And those concepts are nasal cannula can either be used in an acute situations or chronic situations. Now chronic situations are uh, for COBT patients, emphysema. Please see my COPD lecture where I talk about emphysema. Or it can be used in acute situations and those could be for like bronchitis, pneumonia, or any acute episode requiring oxygen, like an MI, myocardial infarction. So when you see a nasal cannula in practice, the first question you should be asking yourself, is this an acute problem or is this a chronic problem? And what I mean by that is, do they always have it on as in a chronic patient? or is, did somebody just put it on? And if it's acute, it requires assessment. So when you're looking at the NCLEX, those are the basic concepts about nasal cannula. Because in questions, when you have a patient with a nasal cannula, what's going on? Is it an acute question or a chronic question? The next oxygen delivery device you need to be aware of is called a non-rebreather. A non-rebreather generally will look like this. And the principle is, this is the concept. For non-rebreathers, patients who are COPD, emphysema, do not get non-rebreathers. And the reason they don't get non-rebreathers is that all the CO2 starts to build up in here, and then they breathe it back in. And the problem is, is that COPD patients tend to be COPD uh, are tend to be CO2 retainers. It means they hold on to the CO2. Well, that makes a patient very sleepy and uh, makes a person, person um, uh, respiratory compromise, goes into respiratory distress. Now, so that's the two concepts. So you have a nasal cannula, given in an acute situations or a chronic situations, and you have a non-rebreather. A non-rebreather is also given in acute situations in trauma patients or when a patient with even bronchitis could temporarily have a non-rebreather on. But generally, we do not just put a non-rebreather on a patient, especially a patient who has COPD, and that's a no. Okay, let's get into the different types now. All right, why would you use a nasal cannula? Now, nasal cannulas are given um, because they can eat, they can drink, they can they can handle high flow up to about five to six liters. And when you have five or six liters giving, you can give it through the nose, and that's a nasal cannula because it goes right through the, uh, the nostrils. So they need to have patent nostrils to do so. Um, it's a frontline uh, oxygen delivery device. It's, it's generally given, like I said, in acute situations, but we'll start them off. Now the liter flow goes, pretty, um, it's not totally accurate because a patient who has two liters, for example, um, it's going in through their nose. So if it's going into the nose, they might be a mouth breather. i put some buck teeth on them. They might be breathing through their mouth. So is it truly the liter flow? And two liters is anywhere from about uh, 24 to 26% oxygen. And what I'm talking about, when I'm talking about oxygen, when we breathe, we have 21% oxygen in room air. Okay, so you and I breathing in, if we're not on oxygen, we're breathing in 21% oxygen. That's the concentration in the atmosphere. All right, and what happens is, is that when a person has good lungs, um, that 21% is accurate. It's enough to to um, oh, hold on, to adequately oxygenate 96 to 
at 100% oxygen. That's on room ear, 21%. Now, if their lungs are good, um, they should be oxygenating that. But if they have something like consolidation, like uh, pneumonia or something like that, um, they're not totally aerating. So they need to, we do what's called turn, call, deep breathe to expectorate some of this. We might give them some treatments, bronchodilators, or we'll give them antibiotics. But they might be put on some oxygen temporarily and usually a nasal cannula. And that's why the nasal cannula works is because it's a good oxygen delivery device temporarily to supplement while we treat the underlying cause. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is a simple face mask. Now a simple face mask is a oxygen delivery device which given in more acute situations, it's not a non rebreather because there's these two wafers right here. And these are called flanges. And on these flanges, um, there's holes. So they can exhale the CO2 and they can get rid of that CO2. And that's the good thing about this. It can deliver oxygen from 35 up to about 60% oxygen through this. And what happens is it goes over their nose and mouth and they are able to exhale some of that CO2. It's not the ideal situation because nasal cannulas are always the ideal for a COPD patient. And then it's only about two to three liters and never more than three liters. And that's because of um, patients with COPD, they'll lose their what's called hypoxic drive. And I cover a little bit about oxygen delivery under COPD, emphysema. The next thing is a non-rebreather. Now a non-rebreather is given in acute situations and the concept that NCLEX tends to ask you is just understanding that in a non-rebreather, if you have this non-rebreather on a COPD patient, it's non-rebreather because remember the CO2 gets blocked in this bag. Well, these wafers on the other one, on the partial rebreather has the holes, but there's these flanges. See, there's these little diaphragms that are on there. Well, you can actually take those diaphragms off and when you take a flap off, you, they actually are no longer 100%. It drops down to about 80, um, with one flap removed, about 85 to 90%. That's oxygen delivered. Now, if you take off two flanges, that's 80% to 85%. And, you know, it's not like 100%, 100% because if both flanges are in, you are delivering 100% oxygen to that person. They're breathing out into this bag and then breathing it back in. Um, but understand that you can turn a, a non-rebreather into a partial rebreather by just removing those flanges. And it changes the oxygen delivery device. So a lot of times in test questions and NCLEX, what you tend to see is this concept about the flanges. Understanding that those flanges are important to be taken off, especially if a patient is a CO2 retainer, like a COPD patient. Well, that's the first part of oxygen delivery devices. You have nasal cannulas, simple face masks, and a non-rebreather, um, each used in acute situations. However, you know, um, a nasal cannula can be given in a chronic condition with a patient with COPD, emphysema, pulmonary fibrosis, lung cancer, or just comfort measures alone. Um, as you start to grow, uh, move up in your oxygen delivery devices from um, from nasal cannula, simple face mask to non-rebreather, it's always important to recognize what is on in the question. And then the next question is that, is this acute or is this chronic? And why, is it, if the oxygen delivery device is in the NCLEX questions, this, it's specific about understanding those basic concepts. In the next lecture, lecture number seven, I'm going to talk about Venturi mask, BVMs, humidification. Um, my name is Camp, and this is Nursing Camp. This is Oxygen Delivery Devices. You can follow me on social media, Nursing Camp, and also Facebook, nursingcamp.com, and Instagram. We'll see you next time.